Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Taylor Swift says she couldn't have asked for a better year, anti-Trump libs just flipped out. Liberals have spent all of 2017 crying on each other's shoulders and wailing about what a horrible of year it was just because Republican President Donald Trump became our president. They seem to be entirely ignoring how dramatically Trump has improved America's economy, among many other things. Thankfully, pop star Taylor Swift has not hid the fact that she, unlike countless traumatized liberals, has had a great year. On her Instagram account, Swift posted a photo from a concert she gave in England and wrote underneath it, I love you guys so much. This was a photo at Paul underscore C. Doty took at a Capital official Jingle Bell Ball in London a few days ago. I couldn't have asked for a better year, all thanks to you. Thanks for all the birthday wishes. Can't wait to see what 28 will be like. See you on tour. Pathetically, liberals attacked Swift for having had a great year in knee-jerk fashion. One person on Twitter posted in response, Is there anything more annoying than Taylor Swift talking about what a great year 2017 has been while everyone else is fighting for our lives under Trump? Another added, I mean, yeah there were Nazis and and white supremacy marches, and families are being torn apart, and there were mass shootings, and people are losing health care, but none of that affects me, so 2017 was great. Do you laugh at how pathetic and miserable liberals have been during Trump's presidency? Libidia Ellen just asked Hillary if Trump can last four years. Closet lesbian Hillary Clinton recently made a guest appearance on fellow lesbian Ellen DeGeneres' daytime talk show, and, predictably, Hillary and her lackey made the whole show be centered on griping about the fact that Clinton lost the election to Trump more than 13 months ago. DeGeneres kicked off Hillary's visit by saying to the twice-failed presidential candidate, Seems like the last time I saw you, you said we were going to do the show in the White House but we were all excited about that. Replied an obviously bitter Clinton, we would have, too. Ellen then took things in a completely irresponsible direction and suggested that our sitting president might not last four years. Said the former sitcom star, you're just thinking, if this was a movie, people would go, there is no way. And it just continues to go on. Do you think that he is really going to last four years? Thankfully, Hillary declined to join in on this dangerous speculation, replying, I can't answer that. I can't predict it. Ellen then decided to make nice with some Republicans, probably so her ratings would not tank. Said a generous about conservatives, I don't believe that you can group a whole bunch of people together. There are some Republicans that are really good, good people and have good intentions. So it is the party, the Republican Party. This is not what it was. This is not what it should be. And so, I do not want to bash Republicans. She went on, obviously lying. I do not want to bash anybody. We just want, I think it is important for me to say. Because I obviously wanted you to be president. And I believed in you. And I have strong opinions. But I want to say that I don't judge everybody by this president. Are you sick of left-wing Ellen? Lebet Asner just said the U.S. was actually founded on gun control. Former Mary Tyler Moore show star Ed Asner is pretty good at comedy acting. He really should stick to that, but because he is a celebrity, the liberal feels the need to play constitutional expert and lecture conservatives about gun rights. In a recent write-up on left-wing site Salon, Asner went as far as to say that the United States was not actually founded on gun control. Asner who is now a lawyer, began by saying, let's consider the case made by the NRA, its congressional hired hands, the majority of the Supreme Court, 
and various right-wing pundits who claim the Second Amendment is not simply about state militias but guarantees the unfettered right of everyone to own, carry, trade and eventually shoot someone with a gun. He then claimed that the Second Amendment is not the clearest amendment in the Constitution. And that's the problem with it, while stating the need for a well-regulated militia, does it at the same time also guarantee the individual citizen the personal right to keep and bear arms? In 2008, Justice Antonin Scalia, ruling for the majority, said that it was. Ed went on, ignoring over 200 years of precedent, historical context, the framers' intent and the D.C. laws of its elected officials, Scalia relied solely on the text, arbitrarily dividing the amendment into two parts. The first dash a well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, he called the prefatory clause. The second part dash the right of the people to keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed, he called the operative clause. Claiming that second part was all that really mattered, Scalia discarded as irrelevant that inconvenient reference to a state militia. Do you think this pompous liberal should stick to making people laugh and stop pretending he's an expert on the Constitution? Obama's friend warns libs will take to the streets if Trump fires Mueller. When America's 43rd President George W. Bush stepped aside from the presidency on January 20, 2009, he moved back to his ranch in Crawford, Texas and kept a low profile. His successor Barack Obama, on the other hand, decided to remain in Washington, D.C., so that he can stir the pot against Republican President Donald Trump. In a truly disturbing turn of events, one of Obama's top associates got involved in a dangerous way. Obama's former federal ethics chief Walter Schaub recently addressed rumors that President Trump is planning on firing special counsel Robert Mueller right before Christmas. Posted Schaub on his Twitter account, This weekend I'm stocking up on portable phone chargers, warm clothes, and gear needed for when we take the streets. I'm concerned the assault on the rule of law is coming over the holidays when we're distracted. It'll be a defining moment for the republic. Obama's official also advertised an event planned by progressive group MoveOn.org. Wrote Schaub, I just registered. Join an event to say no one is above the law. MoveOn describes this as a rapid response protest that would happen if Trump fired Mueller. After Schaub got plenty of heat for his dangerous statements, he replied snarkily to conservatives, this tweet apparently triggered the Tiki Torch crowd. My theory is people with violent tendencies will hear violence in the language of peaceful protest. But you literally have to agree to the policy of nonviolence and complying with all law enforcement orders to sign up, so. Are you disgusted with how Obama and his allies have been riling up liberals against Trump? After April Ryan asked her nasty question, Sarah Sanders tore her apart in this viral video. Sarah Sanders is in a fight with April Ryan and it is getting nastier. Earlier this week, Sarah Sanders started sharing step-by-step -step tweets about her baking a pie. This is in response to April Ryan from CNN accusing her of not making the pie that she posted a pic of on Thanksgiving. It was called Gate. You can check out the videos below. But let's take a look at what Sarah Sanders said today right in April Ryan's face. April Ryan got bite in the face. Check out the ongoing feud that Sarah Sanders and April Ryan have kept after hashtag gate. Sarah Sanders is hilarious and is beating the media every time they try and go after her. We need to keep fighting for Sarah Sanders because she is. Everyone have a wonderful holiday and eat lots of real buys. Even if the mainstream media tries to tell you that they are fake buys, trust your own gut. A pie is a pie and the MSM is the enemy of the American people. They are starting to get harder and harder to stomach. Let's show some support for our heroes in the Trump administration that are fighting to make this country great. Give Sarah a go. In the comments.
Liberal minister just blamed white evangelicals for causing systemic poverty. Democrat Doug Jones's surprise victory over Republican moral crusader Lamore Moore in Alabama clearly put wind in left-wingers' sails. Now liberals are planning to build on this win, and part of their effort comes in the form of targeting white evangelicals. A left-wing pastor named Rev. Dr. William Barber from North Carolina started a movement the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival and he intends to go cross-country to promote it. In kicking off his effort, Barber publicly blamed white evangelicals for somehow creating poverty. Wrote Barber in an article for left-wing newspaper The Guardian, the states with the highest poverty rates are in the South. And those same states have the highest rates of voter suppression of black people. Through this racialized voter suppression, politicians who support policies that hurt the poor get elected. Blaming white evangelicals, he went on, so-called white evangelicals are omnipresent in the poorest areas of our country, and they say the least about systemic poverty, which is the foremost issue in authentic Christian religious theology. After our denominations splintered over the moral question of slavery and the nation stood on the brink of civil war, Frederick Douglass said, Between the Christianity of this land and the Christianity of Christ, I recognize the widest possible difference. This is not the first time Barber has attacked white evangelicals. In November he said about white evangelicals who supported Joy Moore, This is not Christianity. Rather, it is an extreme Republican religionism that stands by party and regressive policy no matter what. It's not the gospel of Christ, but a gospel of greed. It is the religion of racism and lies, not the religion of redemption and love. Do you think it's sick he's blaming white evangelicals for other people's problems?